and we will move to questions of the Cabinet members until the 45-minute continuous period for questions and answers has ended. I now call on Councillor Daly to put his question. Uh, question 18 to the Cabinet member. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Daly, for the question and also a formal welcome to your role as the uh, Chief Whip for the Minority Party. Um, you see there written out in, in the written answer uh, that, that uh, we in the majority party slightly disagree with your assessment on what is and what isn't a successful uh, online consultation. Uh, the, the panel that we are building up, the online panel, is starting from uh, a deliberately low and slow base so that we can better analyze how respondents uh, re re deal with some quite complex questions that will be asked about local government provision and services. Now, I appreciate as well, of course, that uh, in this age of Facebook and Twitter, it's uh, easy to get taken away by the, uh, the, the need for online consultation and forget some of the myriad other ways that we actually reach out to residents day in, day out. Uh, some of them, of course, there again, set out in the written answer, and one of which, of course, is Brightside, which I think we'll come back to uh, in relation to a question from one of his colleagues shortly. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, I thank uh, Councillor Jacob for his comments um, and uh, welcome him to his role as the whip over there. Um, but back to the question. Um, um, as you say, most of your focus has been on building up online consultation. There are other ways that the council has been trying over the past years to get in touch with residents, but without a great deal of success, really. Um, and I don't think the answer to this question really suggests how you're going to improve that going forward. Uh, you mention here that you don't think targets are worth stating because you're moving away from the box-ticking culture of new labour. However, you have also said... Uh, that you do have your own target, but you're not willing to share it with us. So perhaps you could just elaborate a little bit on what you plan to do to reach out to some of those people that aren't online, certainly on some of the estates, uh, and, uh, and perhaps you could enlighten us on what your community engagement target for May 2014 actually is. It's a local election, uh, <laughs> and, and that's really where we will be judged uh, on both sides of, of this chamber. Uh, in the ballot box by our electors. Uh, I disagree with you, I'm afraid, uh, in terms of your judgment on how we reach out to residents. I think everything from uh, the residents' associations to the management advisory uh, committees for our parks and commons uh, to the way that we uh, deal, out, deal and proactively sit on school governing boards across the uh, borough, work with our SNT panels, I mean, the list goes on. I think we do reach out in an awful lot of ways, uh, and uh, I'm afraid I just disagree with the premise of the question. Second supplementary. Thank you. It might have been my, my Madam Mayor comment earlier. Um, doesn't doesn't, um, doesn't um, uh, the Cabinet member also um, agree that Councillor Daly's missed one of the most important um, means of communication, which is the ward councillor? It's our job as councillors to talk to residents and reach out and go on to estates and knock on doors. It just seems to me that he's completely forgotten that that's what we're here for. Uh, I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Councillor Norrit. 19 to the Cabinet Member. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor Morritt, for your question. Uh, as you see there in the written answer, again, we are in a process now where we are asking our officers to review all aspects of our communication strategy. That's not to turn our back on the successful ways that we have been reaching out to residents across the borough, but it is to reflect that we can always do more. We can always uh, constantly refresh the ways that we have a dialogue with our residents. Uh, and of course, with the uh, ones with challenge now coming into effect, and the debate on that will take place shortly, it's more important than ever before to engage with our residents in a proactive way. Um, could I just make a plea for a little more emotional intelligence uh, in some of our communications? I do recognize um, that much of what needs to be covered is statutory, but at the moment mes many residents, I think, feel that they are deeply impersonal and a more customer-central uh, focus should be at the heart of some of this review. Uh, I agree very much with the councillor. I think there's a tendency for officers and members, of course, to get sucked into the jargon of the local government world. Uh, and that is sometimes reflected in the way that we communicate with our businesses and our residents. Uh, and uh, as part of our review of communications uh, across the piece, we'll certainly be looking at that and trying to, uh, to humanize, if you like, some of our communications a little bit more. Councillor Cooper? It's only very recently, and I'm sure the Cabinet member will remember, that uh, uh, ex-Councillor Lister 
um, replied to Councillor Hogg and said that Andy Coulson was an excellent person to employ um, and he hoped he'd be coming back to number 10 very soon. Obviously that hasn't happened and I believe that Mr Coulson is currently <coughs> at liberty um, so perhaps uh, he might be worth consulting on um, our communication strategy. Has he thought about doing that? <laughs> well, he may be available for, for a, a low fee very soon. Who knows? Um, but uh, given that it's obviously a matter that's under investigation, it's probably wise not to uh, speculate further. Mr. Thomas. Question number 20 to the Cabinet member. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the councillor for his question. Uh, as he uh, very well knows from his time as a councillor, and indeed before that when he's worked so hard in the community in Fursdown, it's a very special and distinct part of the borough. Um, yes, indeed, we have uh, offered support to the festival in the past and indeed tried to give it seed funding in effect to build it up. Of course, financial times are very tight at the moment. We are having to make cuts across the board. Hopefully, it's an opportunity for that very special and distinct part of the borough to draw on that community ethos that's really at the heart of Thursdown and try and develop other sources of funding um, to, to match the, the council's still very heavy investment. I think it's £3,500 in, in the festival. Dr Thomas? Uh, I will uh, pass back his description of uh, uh, Thursdown to the people of Thursdown. Uh, but can I ask him, doesn't the council's action and approach in this case actually demonstrate that far from being about uh, supporting local communities to take control and run activities on a voluntary basis, in practice, actually what the big society boils down to is squeezing the voluntary sector until the pips squeak? Uh, no, I, I absolutely disagree. Uh, of course, we are uh, in a very, very tight financial situation at the moment caused obviously by the car crash in the UK's public finances. But no, I think the big society is very much about reaching out to the voluntary sector, uh, not just the larger voluntary organisations, but many small and community-based uh, groups. Uh, we've seen the establishment of the local big society fund and the first donations to come from that, first grants to come from that. So no, I don't think it's really uh, some kind of cover for cuts. Uh, I think it really is a way of trying to engage the community, uh, the wider community, in the way that we run our public services. Second supplement. Hey. Um, would the Cabinet Member for Communications care to speculate on whether the MP for Tooting's assertion that the rate for hiring the Thursdown, Thursdown Rec has gone up by 700% might have incensed people quite unnecessarily? And could he confirm whether the price has gone up by 700% or whether this is a myth? I strongly suspect it's a myth. I don't have the figures uh, to my fingertips, but I can certainly check and give you a written answer. <laughs> Councillor uh, Russia. Question 21 to the Cabinet Member. Uh, I'd like to uh, thank the uh, Councillor for her question. Um, of course, the, uh, the Council website is very heavily trafficked, more than a quarter of a million visits uh, every month. Uh, but, it, of course, the website could, uh, could do with uh, a little bit of improvement. Um, we need to look at some of the best examples out there from across the country and local government. It's part of the wider ranging review of communications that we're undertaking. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Um, I thank the Cabinet Member for his answer, um, and I do welcome the advances mentioned in his reply, and indeed other, other um, improvements that he's already referred to. But I still feel that a lot more could be done to facilitate easier navigation and interactivity. Um, some of us have taken part in the last few months in big lunch groups, for example, and I think that all the organisers of the big lunches um, could actually have had an online forum where they could have... Um, posted their, the, the good things, the bad things, and, and, and that might have been set up. And I just wondered if he'd consider setting up a working group with some councillors, some residents, and some representatives of business to see um, what their, the user's suggestions might be for improvements. I'm very happy indeed to take up that suggestion. I mean, we live in an age where people are more than ever booking their holidays online, doing their banking online, ordering their food online. I think local government as a whole, not just Wandsworth, is kind of behind the curve slightly on that, and we need to look at it. Uh, and we also, uh, some of the simple areas that you mentioned in terms of navigation and, uh, of the website, the look and feel, absolutely, that that also needs to be looked at. Um, so yes, I think that's a very sound suggestion. Well, he's rejected my suggestion that um, Andy Coulson should help generally with um, our uh, communications. Um, so obviously he may not accept that he'd be a good person to help us with our website. Um, but I would like to endorse um, what Councillor 
Usher has said. Um, and would he agree with both of us that even though we had a revamp a year ago, that our website is really not up to the mark? Um, there are lots of others that are much easier to navigate and much easier to use. And um, I, w is he happy to press ahead with this idea of a review group involving people um, from outside of the group of councillors and officers? I think it's really important if we're going to go down the route of e-consultation and really involving people in the work of the council and having some kind of understanding of what we're doing, we need to have a website that is fit for purpose and fit for the 21st century. And it is, frankly, clunky. Would he agree? It's always a pleasure to half agree with Councillor <laughs> Cooper. Um, I wouldn't go so far as uh, you do in your description of it, but it certainly could be improved. Uh, yes, you're right, it was obviously uh, updated not that long ago, but there are further improvements we can make to it. And uh, certainly, uh, as you suggest, and as Councillor Russia suggested, we need to consult with the people that actually would end up using the site to make sure it fits their needs.